Hi everybody, Bert Zimmerman here and welcome to episode 4 of the racetrack and holding tutorial. This is a brilliant day and I thought let's go out to shoot some sequences for the films. We are still in a privileged situation. We do have a lockdown, so um, shops and restaurants and everything is closed. And there is a recommendation to stay at home. However, we're allowed to go out if we respect some rules. And that is no more than five people together and also keep the distance of two meters. So we can go out and enjoy the nature, which is great. And I'm really, really thankful for that. So in this episode, we will cover the remaining two lines of calculations and the remaining two points that I need to explain in the racetrack and holding template. One point is point R, which is a point that we use to define potential limiting radials, which obviously I will explain in the film. And the second point is point E, which is a point that we construct to protect for the various entry procedures. So let's dig into it. Limiting radials are mainly used for VOR DME holdings where the outbound distance is not defined by timing but defined by a DME distance. If you hold away from the DME station and then you turn outbound and the outbound leg is towards the station so to speak, then if that distance is a relatively short distance there is a possibility that that limiting DME will never show up because of wind drift and to make sure that situation is covered and cannot occur and lead to some dangerous cases limiting radials are established. So in which situation do we require a limiting radial? If we hold at the VOR DME fix away from the station the limiting DME distance that ends the outbound leg is closer to the VOR DME station than the actual holding fix. If this is a relatively close distance and we have a wind as indicated in the film, the aircraft will eventually never capture the limiting DME distance. In order to avoid this, we can specify a limiting radial which allows the aircraft to end the outbound leg and start the inbound turn. So when I specify the limiting radial, it must be specified in a fashion that the aircraft is allowed to finish the outbound turn before I force it to start the inbound turn. In Pan's Ops, paragraph 332246, it says, Point R, this point is used to determine the lowest position of the limiting radial so that this radial does not cross the area containing the end of the outbound turn. The way the point is constructed is then described in subparagraph A, draw the tangent to the area containing the end of the outbound turn, passing through the intersection point of the outline of the template with the C-axis. The area containing the end of the outbound turn here is simply the wind effect circle WH applied at point H. Subparagraph B then says locate point R at the intersection of this tangent with the curve drawn in 332243B. That curve mentioned is the wind spiral around H, O and P. Why would we draw this blue line from the green dot? It is simply the absolutely closest position that we can define in this template where we could imagine the VOR DME station. In reality, it cannot be this close to the holding point, but it is the closest position we can work with. All right, point E then is a point we use as a reference to construct and determine the omnidirectional entry areas in the direction of the outbound end and in the direction of the holding site. The point is located by its coordinates X, E and Y, E, which I will explain now. Line 32 calculates the X, E distance, which requires some explanations. 
The most adverse case for a direct entry is when it is flown perpendicular to the inbound track from the non-holding side and the wind blowing as shown in the illustration. The airplane, even without wind influence, will be displaced to the right compared to the nominal holding pattern. With the wind influence as illustrated, that displacement to the right will be even more significant. So this picture indicates that with the flown geometry and the indicated wind, the aircraft would be pushed out of the protected area. So we will calculate the worst case position in terms of geometry and then we will calculate the wind exposure during that flight pattern to figure out how much displacement we will have to take care of. The point E max where we measure the maximum time of wind exposure is not at 90 degrees after the inbound turn but after 15 degrees more to account for any possible drift in the meantime. The formula in line 32 can be separated into two parts. The first part is geometry, the second part is wind influence. The geometry part simply defines the maximum distance towards the right that the aircraft flies. This is consisted of one radius, then the nominal timing outbound plus a late 10 seconds timing, plus 5 seconds for bank establishment time, multiplied with the speed per second, plus another radius. The wind exposure part calculates the time from the moment the aircraft initiates the turn overhead the holding fix until the point E max. At the holding fix we count 6 seconds of reaction time and 5 seconds for the bank establishment time. Then we need to calculate the time it takes to do a 90 degree turn, then the nominal outbound timing T, 10 seconds late timing, 5 seconds for bank establishment time to turn inbound. Then the time it takes for another 90 degrees of turn plus an extra 15 to account for eventual drift to point E max. So the total time on top of the nominal timing is 26 seconds, 11 at the holding fix and 15 at the outbound end of the leg. Then we calculate the time it takes to do 195 degrees of turn by taking 195 degrees and divided by the rate of turn which returns seconds. And we multiply this with the wind speed per second. So here again the displacement graphically separated into geometry and wind drift. Line 33 then calculates the Y-E distance. This one probably needs even more explanation. The most adverse case for a parallel outbound entry is if it is flown along the 70 degree separation line and the wind blows as illustrated in the picture. As the plane will turn outbound overhead the fix, it will be displaced to the right at the end of the outbound turn compared to the nominal pattern. It will also be further away from the inbound track than in any other parallel outbound case. This fact is not covered by the template constructed before. The indicated wind will add to the problem and make the plane actually become non-protected by the already constructed template. Here you can see the pattern flown geometrically and then the influence of the wind that will push the aircraft outside of the protected area. The formula in line 33 can also be separated into geometry and wind influence. The formula above is the one directly derived from line 33 that has in the middle R isolated and then multiplied with the bracket 1 plus sine 20. The formula below is a little bit more visual so to speak without isolating R and just adding the R and adding R times sine 20. It is actually the same formula. Let's look at the geometry part first. 
When overheading the fix, the aircraft takes 6 seconds of reaction time and 5 seconds of bank establishment time. But as this is flown along the 70 degree line and I want to measure in the north-south axis, this results in 11 seconds multiply it with the speed per second and then multiply it with the cosine of 20. The distance from the beginning of the outbound turn vertically to the center of the outbound turn is 1 radius multiplied with the sine of 20 degrees. Then we go further south by 1 radius. On the outbound leg we give the aircraft a heading tolerance of 5 degrees to the right. The aircraft will time 10 seconds late and use 5 seconds for bank establishment. So it's going to be t plus 15 times the tangent of 5 degrees. The wind exposure time is calculated along the pattern that the aircraft flies geometrically plus an additional 15 degrees of turn to account for any possible drift occurred so far. The aircraft will take 6 seconds reaction time overheading the fix, 5 seconds for establishing the bank, then the time it takes to go through 110 degrees of turn, then the nominal outbound timing, plus 10 seconds late timing, plus 5 seconds to establish the bank for the inbound turn, plus the time it takes for the additional 15 degrees. So total we have again 26 seconds over the nominal timing, plus a total of 125 degrees of turn. So if I flew both entry procedures as described with the wind as described, I would end up outside the protected area. Of course it would be possible to construct the protection for these two cases, but we already have a protection for similar maneuvers with the template. The only problem is we cannot use point A as the reference because it's too close to the end of the protected area. So imagine that we move the yellow aircraft inside the protected area, but with that move, point A also moves to the left. Same for the red YE position aircraft. If we move that up to be inside the protected space, that also moves the reference point to the north. This picture now illustrates that if I flew those two entry procedures to point E, which is obviously an imaginary point, the aircraft would be protected by the already constructed template. Alright, that was episode 4. In the next episode we will cover the use of the template and the application in various cases. So stay tuned, stay healthy and see you next time. Bye bye.